Hey guys, Bill Nichols. Bill Nichols TV. So I've been gone about a week. I got sick. We traveled to Park City, Utah as a family. Went on a ski trip. Had a great time. It was crazy hot. But uh, I remember about a week ago or so when I posted that last video about removing objects using gradients. Well, I got a lot of people that liked that video, but also said, hey, can you show us some simpler stuff with the clone tool? Or maybe content to wear fill or something like that. I'm not quite sure how it works. So that's what today's video is. So join me. I'm going to run through the clone tool. I'm going to run through content to wear fill. And I make this a good quick video on cloning stuff out in Photoshop. So like anything in Photoshop, there's about 10, 20, 30 different ways to do almost anything. And depending on what your workflow is, one might work better for you than the other. So specifically with object removal or with cloning objects or removing objects, multiplying them, whatever, a bunch of different tools you can use from selections and copying to the clone tool to pattern stamping to everything. So today I want to dig back into removing objects, focus mostly on the clone tool, on the stamp tool. We're going to uh, jump into two images here, and then uh, I'm going to show you some things that I do, both in architectural images, which will relate across a whole bunch of different images, and then some portraits on um, what I do using the stamp tool to remove stray hairs, to remove objects from it, and everything. Some quick, dirty tips for you to kind of rewind from the more complex one that we did last week. So let's jump right into Photoshop. All right, so I've got two images here today. Um, this is the kitchen that I used previously, and previously I had removed this uh, lamp over here. Um, right here, I removed this with a gradient. Uh, we're not going to do that today. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to look at removing some objects, primarily using the stamp tool. We're going to look at uh, removing some of these uh, switches right here. So some of these. Look at removing maybe this wall switch using the content to wear fill. Then look at removing this, um, some of these reflections that are on the counter here, some of these, this little reflection that's on the tile, this little button here. That's it there. Let's, um, we've got one other image of a model that was shot. Uh, this image is ready to go. She had perfect skin. Just about, um, this is really basically straight out of the camera. What we've got to do here, let's zoom out. If we look at it, overall the portrait's great, light's good, everything. Um, but we're going to come in here and we're going to look at this hair here. So if we bring in this brush, we're going to look at removing some of these stray hairs on this side and some of the straight hairs on this side. Seems like a pretty easy job, but there is one challenge here in that this background, while it's pretty well evenly lit, it's just a little bit brighter up here than it is down here, and a little bit brighter in here than it is out here. So as you start doing some removals, you can get some differences in the background. And we're going, I'm going to show you how you can use blending modes to um, get rid of that. So let's start first on some easier stuff here in the kitchen. So whenever I'm working and I'm using the clone stamp or just about anything that I'm doing, I'm going to use um, a new layer. But what I'm going to do in this image, because I'm going to use two different types of uh, object removal, I'm going to first duplicate the background layer by saying duplicate layer. We'll just call it background copy. That's fine. And I'm going to create one more new layer. I'm going to call this clone. And this is where I'm going to actually keep all of my clone work that I'm doing. Um, primarily removing these switches, these reflections, and this little button here. So to get started, I've got the clone layer, and we're just going to start with the stamp tool. And you can get to the stamp tool two different ways. You can press S on the keyboard, or you can come right over here and just click on the rubber stamp. I'll press S. And basically, the way that the stamp tool is going to work is that um, you've got a brush, so you can see my brush right here. I'm going to select something. Um, a source, and then I'm going to clone that source wherever I then put the cursor. So really quickly, my options up here are right here. Now I am working on a on a clone layer, so if I remove these two, it's an empty layer, right? There's nothing on it. And um, so where I have the sample, this is when I hold down Alt or uh, Option. So Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, I get this kind of crosshairs bullseye target. That is what I'm going to sample and then I'm going to draw somewhere else. So if I had this set to current layer, I have my empty layer selected. When I sample, say, right here for the stove, and then I go to draw anywhere, I'm not going to have anything. So typically when I'm using the clone tool or the stamp tool, I'm going to select current and below. I don't want to select all layers because then I'm sampling all layers, but I do want to select current and below. I'm going to hold down option. Let's just uh, sample the microwave right here. 
So I just held down option, clicked. Now that's where I'm sampling from. And then you can see as I come up here, if I just start drawing, I'm going to start getting everything that I just sampled. So obviously we don't want to do it that way. Um, that's not what we want to sample. Um, with that, I can do some different things. So that was with the opacity at 100%. So if I bring that down to 30%, let's sample something new. Let's sample the refrigerator over here. Let's draw it over here. You'll see that it comes through somewhat transparent. You can see, still see the cabinets behind there. Then if I go over it again, I'll get more opacity and more and more and more. Let's um, undo all of those. So we'll just go back here to, to um, duplicate layer and new layer. That's where we started. Let's name this layer one. Let's name it clone. All right, so we're going to get started here with just really quickly removing these light switches. So first thing I'm gonna do is just zoom in. Make sure I've got my correct layer, the clone layer selected. I'm going to go to stamp. Now this brush is huge. I'm gonna bring this down. I do this by using the open and close brackets. Open brackets will make the brush smaller. Close brackets will make the brush bigger. And then this is a medium softness, so this is fine. And all that I wanna do here, I'm gonna hold down option. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna actually select like right on this line because this is a good reference point. And now you can see that line. So where I start drawing, that's where I'm, that's where I'm going to get it. So I'm gonna bring that line right over here to this light switch, line it up exactly with the existing grout line there. And I'm gonna go ahead and push down to get started. And now, oh, our opacity is off. Let's just bring that back up to 100. And now as I start drawing here, and every time that I pick up, I'm just grabbing from a new area. And I just come over and that quick, that light switch is gone. And it looks great, let's zoom back out. There we are. So that one is gone. Now if I turn off the clone layer, you can see it pop right back. There it is. And I haven't affected the main layer, the original uh, photo. So I'm being non-destructive here. So I can just turn these off anytime that I want. I'm gonna zoom in here again. I'm gonna press the stamp. I'm gonna sample from right here. Come over, make sure that those line up really well. And I think I might be just a little bit off here, but let's see how this looks. Yeah, just a little off. Let's undo that. I can move that later if I wanted to, but um, let's go ahead and go to Alt. There we go. I'm just gonna come in here, paint this away. Two down. And let's go one more. So this one, since there's not much room over here, I'm just gonna sample from this side right here. And there we go. It's really just this quick that I can go in and get rid of these. That's it there. So let's back out. So there's three out of four lights, which is gone. That took us, what, all of about a minute. Now let's go in here. Let's go to this tile. I'm gonna do the same thing. Come over here. I'm gonna go back to the stamp. Just make a brush right above this. I'm gonna make a sample right above this. Come down. I'm just gonna get rid of that. And come over here. Now when I'm on this, on so this is all pretty uniform up here. When I'm on this counter, there's a bit more noise. I mean, there's a little bit of noise, but there's definitely you could see some patterns if it was too. Um, if I had brush strokes that were like too defined, I'm gonna come up here. And I'm gonna grab a softer brush. So I wanna grab really hardness of zero is a bit extreme, a bit soft, but I'm gonna to go to a hardness of about 21. So this is a nice soft brush. I'm gonna sample right below this, and now I'm just gonna come up here and I'm just gonna paint this out. And the reason I chose a soft brush is that I wanted to blend in with the counter pretty well. And I can come over here. And the one thing that I wanna be aware of is you can see how the wall is reflected into the counter right here. I wanna maintain that. So I just want to come over here and just really get rid of this. Get this really soft brush. And I don't want to make this look absolutely perfect. Like there are definitely imperfections in this counter. We want to maintain that because there's a little variation. Um, and we can just come over here and get rid of these. Same thing here rid of whatever this weird blob is. I don't know what that is. There's another one up top that I saw I didn't get rid of. If I was just delivering this as 
you know, if I was doing this for the final delivery, I would definitely get rid of it. Now let's come over here, just get rid of all this. Make this brush a little bit bigger. We could probably make it less, just slightly less soft, but um, it's all right for now. I'm gonna leave this little line right here because that does have to do with um, the reflection up above and I don't wanna to totally kill it. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And that looks pretty good. So we've got rid of these reflections that were over here. We got rid of this reflection on the tile. Same thing, let's come over to this guy. We can see this line that runs right along here. Let's go ahead and change the hardness of the brush back to about mm, maybe 60, 65. It's up to be exact. Grab this line, come up where I can see that line. And now let's just grab that guy out. Probably have to gonna go a few times. And then I've got a soft brush here so I can just kind of go around the edge. Kind of feather that in so it looks pretty good. Ooh, let's get rid of that guy there. And same thing, just kind of feather that in. Zoom back out, that looks pretty good. If I was doing the final delivery here, I'd go ahead and get rid of these light switches, but same technique that we just used. But one thing that I wanna show you is, let's come over here to this light switch. Let's actually just use the marquee. Let's draw a selection right around it. It's nice and uniform. Same thing, hold down Shift and Delete. Do Content Aware, say OK. There we go. Now that's pretty good. That made a nice selection around it. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And uh, so we got rid of that switch really quick. We got rid of these wall plates back here, and we still have this one and these couple, but they would have been the same technique. And we got rid of all of these reflections, and now we can undo that work. So if I just click off that clone layer, you can see it come back. There we are. So really quick overall, you know, it took us maybe you know six, eight minutes while teaching how to do that. So now let's jump over to our second image. All right, so we've got we've got this female model here, um, really you know great look overall. Just some straight, just, just some stray hairs here to um, clean up. So we're gonna do the same basic thing. We're gonna create a new layer, name this clone. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the clone stamp, but let me show you something about this. Uh, I'm going to do just kind of a really extreme example. If I wanted to come in here and use the clone stamp, normally what I would do is I have it here, make a small little brush, come to options, sample right below a hair, and then start coming up here you know, and get rid of, getting rid of this hair. But as I do this, if I sample over here, I start you know, sampling another hair and bringing another hair in, and it's just kind of a pain. So instead, what I'm going to do is... Um, Let's come up. Is I'm going to set this. Well, let me show you one more thing. So just kind of a pain. And then um, if I decide that I want to maybe clone out here. So let's go stamp. I'm going to make a big brush just to show a point here. As I sample from elsewhere. So like if I'm down here and I'm painting up here, you'll be able to see this um, this change of the background. So see how that doesn't match? So this happens a lot when you're trying to work on backgrounds where the background isn't completely consistent. So what we want to do instead, we want to make it so that Photoshop doesn't even have that option really to make that area any darker. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to take her dark hair and get rid of it against the light background. So what we can do instead is we can say, let's let this layer only lighten things. And we can do that by setting the layer style to lighten. So I'm in my clone layer, I set the layer style to lighten. And now if I come in here, I grab the clone, the, the stamp tool, I'm gonna make this a rather soft brush, not 100% soft, maybe about 30%, 35% softness. Got a pretty good size brush. Let me hold down option. I'll just select somewhere. Now I'm just gonna come in and paint over her hair. I've got the opacity set at 65, let's set it at 100. And as I come in, I'm gonna start getting rid of these hairs. And what I've done is I've sampled an area of the background that's lighter than her hair, because her hair is darker than the background. And now, it's only going to affect her hair, but if the background itself is lighter than what I am sampling, so I'm sampling something darker over here, this is lighter, it's not gonna make the background any darker because I've told it to only make things lighter. So now I can just come in here, paint with this background brush, 
can make her hair, effectively I'm lightening her hair to the sample color, up to the lightness of the background behind it. Okay, so now let's zoom out. So I've got rid of those. And I'm doing this really, really quickly. This is a great way to get rid of stray hairs because I can now just come in here. I've got a soft brush and just get rid of these. And I'll show you what we've actually done here in a second because we'll turn off all layers. So that's too manicured. Let's just come in here now. The nice thing here is that she shot with a really shallow depth of field like F4. So the um, she doesn't have a really sharp hairline um, back here. It's already blurry. So as I get rid of this and just kind of blend this in, it doesn't look all that unnatural because the um, the hair that's there is already out of focus you know, and blurry. So as long as I maintain a good natural shape here, it's going to um, look pretty natural on the final product. Let's come down here, sample this. All right, not perfect yet, but you can see now, like she's got a lot of her stray hairs gone. You know, there's some down here, there's some right here. But if I turn this off, there's her hair. There we are getting rid of the stray hairs, nice and easy. That took all about two minutes. And what we actually did here is just this. So there is the gray that we've brought in. Um, this is what we actually painted on. And we did it in a lightened mode. So that way, if I'm here, this part here is slightly darker than this part here. As I'm getting rid of her hair, it's only going to bring that hair, um, the background behind that hair, to the same lightness as the background here. It's not going to allow me to go and make this any darker. It's a fantastic way of um, getting rid of stray hairs and not affecting the background when you don't have a perfectly uniform background. Like this looks like a pretty well lit controlled background, but I do have a light that's coming that's coming from above here that's lighting her. So you can see the catch light right here in her eye. All right, so there's this octobox right here. There's a light over off to the left you know, that's giving her a little bit of uh, sculpt here in her face. And this is throwing some light onto the background so you're not getting quite an even background. But that is it. That is um, some basic stuff on using the clone stamp. So I use it all the time, and um, those are the two ways that I use it. You know, you can use it directly on an image. You know, it's like you could use it here getting rid of her hair, but I'd probably just use the spot healing brush for this. But uh, I use it with lighten against a background or darken. If she had blonde hair, then I'd probably have to use lighten and darken as a combination because she would have some dark and light hairs. But since she's got mostly all dark hair here, you know, no grays or anything, I can just use lighten and uh, light her hair against the background until those strays are gone and uh, clean up her hair really quick. All right guys, that's it. So a couple of quick things. One, I used my Wacom tablet today. Um, I use a tablet, mine's all beat up. I mean, I've had this thing now for years. Uh, I use this because it gives me really good pressure control. It gives me really good precision as far as what I'm doing. I use this almost all the time for all editing. Um, you don't need one, you could use your mouse, you could use your trackpad, just the same. But uh, if you want to, my suggestions, get a small Wacom tablet, nothing bigger than the small one. Map the area to an even smaller area so that it suits your needs. And I've got a video on the Wacom stuff, I'll put it up here in the cards or something so you'll see it up here. And then um, that's it. So today we used the clone tool, we used some layer modes. I used the light layer mode to remove some hair, showed you how that worked. Remember, whatever, whatever mode you set that to, the description that's there kind of tells you what it's going to do. So I used a lighten mode, and what that was going to do was only allow things to become lighter, not to become darker than they were. Really useful for removing hair, especially against the background that isn't quite a constant color. Like this back here, it would work really well if you're trying to remove something off of me that um, was darker than the background, and uh, you wanted to bring it up to the lightness of the background. So that's it guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. Comment below. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Lots of stuff coming up. I got a lot more time coming up now, so I'll have more videos going up. Doing a lot of filming over the weekend, so expect a fully packed agenda next week. Thank you guys so much for watching, for sticking by while I've only had about a video a week the past couple of weeks. That will speed up, but uh, thank you guys so much. Lots of drone stuff to come. Got a ton of stuff in the works for the Inspire 2, the Phantom 4 Pro, Pro Plus, so stay tuned. Talk to you guys soon. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos.